What's up guys, Patrick here. In this video, we're gonna talk about relations, domain, and range. And to begin, I wanna start off with a definition for what a relation is. It's basically an ordered pair of X values and Y values. And if you remember from previous grades, X values is the independent variable, the Y values are the dependent variable. So let's show two examples of relations. So this example one, we got the hours of study versus the final mark. So out of these two variables, which one would be independent, which one would be dependent? Well, the final mark is usually dependent on the hours of study, right? The hours of study doesn't depend on the final mark. The final mark depends on the hours of study. So the final mark is the dependent variable in this case. Hours of study is the independent variable. What about example two? We have the age versus the height. Which one is the independent variable? Which one's the dependent? Well, the height is usually dependent on the age. So the age is the independent and then the height is the dependent. Especially when you're dealing with ages around this range here, this eight to 12 range, right? The older someone is getting, usually the taller they are going to be. Now there's multiple ways to represent relations. So you can have the relation in a table, but you can also have coordinates representing the relation. So notice we just took all these points here, put them in coordinate form, where the X values usually are the independent variable, that's the hours of study, and then the corresponding dependent variable. So two and 55, two and 55, 358, 358, et cetera, et cetera. Same thing here, took the independent variable of age, uh, put it where the X values are, and then the corresponding dependent variable, usually where the Y's are, in this case, it's the height. Right, so you can represent it as a table, coordinates. You can also represent it in something called a mapping diagram. Now the way a mapping diagram works is, uh, it's just basically like two boxes. So let's say we take the hours of study here and then we have the final mark. We would make this box here. And basically in this box, we would list out all of the independent variables from lowest to highest. And notice that they're already listed out for us from lowest to highest. So we'd have two, three, five, six, and Eight. Now, one thing you want to remember about mapping diagrams is you never want to write the same variable twice. So notice in this example, there are no variables that repeat, right? Two, three, five, six, eight, same thing here, nothing repeats. It's going to be better shown with example two because notice how the 10 is repeating. And then also notice how the 165 is repeating, right? So you always want to write it just once in the mapping diagram. So here, Mapping diagram for the mark, you got 55, 58, 61, 70, 83. Again, this is nice because everything is already in order. That's not always going to happen though. So from here, you just match everything. 255, 358, 561, 6 and 70, 8 and 83. Right, so this is called a mapping diagram, another way to represent a relation. And then you could go from a mapping diagram if you want, put it in coordinate form, or you could put it as a table. Right, what about the mapping diagram here in example two? So we have the age, and then we have the height. So again, you wanna make sure everything is in order from lowest to highest. So it's already in order here for the age. So we got eight, nine. The 10 appears twice, but we only write it once. And then we have the 11 and the 12. Remember, any variable that repeats, you only write it once in the mapping diagram. And then the height, again, it has to be from lowest to highest. And notice that this is not from lowest to highest. It's a little bit scattered here. So the lowest value of all of these is 162.5. So we would write that at the top. After 162.5, the next value is 165. 
and notice that that happens twice, but we only write it once. 167.5 is the next one. And then we have 170 and then 172.5, like that. So from here, now we just match. So 8 and 165, that is, uh, wow, I already did that wrong. 8 and 165, right there. 9 and 162.5, that is over here. 10 and 165, so that's here. 10 and 167.5, that is there. Uh, 11, 172.5, that's here. And then 12 and 170, that's there. Right, so notice how this mapping diagram looks a little bit more complex than this one. This one was just straight lines. Notice you could have lines cross. You can have lines that come to the same dependent variable, or you can have the same independent variable going to multiple dependent variables. Right, so that's how you go from a table to a mapping diagram. And again, you should be able to go from a mapping diagram to a table or coordinate form as well. And then the fourth most common way to represent a relation is with a graph. So I drew out these graphs here. And you would just plot the points, whether from the coordinate, from the mapping diagram, or the table. So 2 and 55, notice how the hours of study, that's this axis, the independent variable always goes on the x-axis, dependent variable, the mark in this case always goes on the y-axis. So 2 and 55, that is here. 3 and 58, that's about there. Um, 5 and 61, that's like over here. Uh, 6 and 70, that's like up there. And then 8 and 83, that's like up there. So from this graph, you could see the more hours on average a student puts in, the higher their mark is going to be. And moving on to example two, we got age, which is the independent variable, right? So that goes on the x-axis. And we got the height, which is the dependent variable that's going on the y-axis. So let's plot these points, eight and 165, that is here. Nine and 162.5, that's like over here. 10 and 165, that's over here. Uh, 10 and 167.5, that would be like right there. Uh, 11 and 172.5, that's like up here. And then 12 and 170 over here. So there seems to be somewhat of a relation here. Higher the age, the higher the height. It's not as pronounced as this one. Notice we could draw a line right through that. Here it's a little bit more scattered, but again, we're not taking a big sample size either. If we took a larger sample size, we would probably see a more direct correlation there. The higher the age, the uh, higher the height. And before finishing off this video, I wanna go over the definitions for what the domain and range is. Really simple, the domain is just the set of values of the independent variable in a relation, while the range is a set of values of the dependent variable in a relation. So the domain usually deals with the x values, the range deals with the y values. So the domain and range for the examples that we did before, example one, here it's just written out, 2, 3, 5, 6, 8. The range is 55, 58, 61, 70, 83. And the way you write out the domain and range is very similar to how we did the mapping diagram. You do it from lowest to highest, and you only write out any repeating variables once. So remember how that 10 repeated in example two for the uh, age, which was the independent variable? Well, notice we only wrote it out once here. Same thing for the 165. The 165 repeated, but we only wrote it out once for the dependent variable in the range. Everything is from lowest to highest. So very similar to the mapping diagram. There's actually multiple ways to uh, write the domain and range. For this example, this is the only way to write it. 
but uh, depending on the type of example you get, there could be different formats. We're gonna go over those in future videos. Now in the next video, I'm gonna talk about a concept called a function, and it's an important concept. It's actually what the course is called, functions. So it's something you'll definitely be getting tested on. And I'm gonna relate that video back to these two examples. So these two examples are gonna carry over to the next video. So, so it's like a continuation of this one.